love for God is running rapid in the church now. Everything except for God is running rapid in some of our lives. Who got faith in their father tonight? I'm a man now. We thank you, Father, for continuing to make my mouth as a pen of a ready writer. We press in in the name of Jesus tonight, God, to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise, O oh Father, right now in the name of Jesus, knowing tonight, God, that you are God and that you are God alone tonight, O oh God. We pray now, God, that as there is disturbance in the atmosphere tonight, God, that you would, that God, tonight you would prevail in the midst of the atmosphere tonight, O oh God. We thank you that because you have power and because you have all power and because you rule and super rule tonight, O oh God, we thank you that now. God, in the dimension of the atmosphere tonight, God, that you would speak peace and that you would bind up distractions tonight, oh God, that you would take dominion authority over everything that would try to impede and everything that would try to hinder and offset and alter your anointing tonight in the name of Jesus. We know that you are the answer, but I pray even now, Father, that you would become the manifested answer that they need tonight. And Father, as always, as you increase, oh God, your daughter shall decrease, and we thank you tonight. Father, for continuing to make my mouth as the pen of your ready writer, bringing forth only that which you utter, decree, and declare. And tonight, Father, as a believing, unified body of believers, we do come giving you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. And together as a people, we will bless your name and let all of the redeemer of the Lord say amen. We give God glory on tonight. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord tonight. It's important to be faithful to God even when you think you at your wit's end or you're on your last leg. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I need to talk for a minute to build somebody up. Because you think God ain't getting ready to come through. You think God ain't getting ready to move. God said, when I get you at the end of yourself, I don't know who God is talking to on this line tonight. He said, but when I get you to the end of yourself, that's when I step in. That's when when I open up, that's when I begin to manifest because I done got you out of yourself and out of my way. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's nice. I done got you out of yourself and out of my way. And that's when I'm going to show up. He ain't showing me who that's for. He told me just to drop it just that quick. But what I want to talk to you about, what the Lord just dropped in my spirit right before I dialed the line because I was waiting to hear a word from God. I was saying, God, I'm just going to go on there then and pray since you ain't said anything. And right when I got ready to dial the line, the Lord said to tell you that are here tonight. He said, tell them last week I told them to annihilate it. But this week I want them to birth it. Y'all got to hear this tonight. He said, I want them to birthday. See, some of y'all been going through some stuff not because you hadn't killed off the unnecessary things and killed off the enemies that had come to try to kill you, but God said, this is why I needed you to annihilate some stuff because now I'm releasing this commandment for you to birth something. Some of us have been going through and coming to something greater in God. Some of us cannot wrap our mind, our natural or our spiritual mind around the fact of God. Why is all of this hell here? Is anybody like me today in Georgia saying, God, why is it so hot? I understand some things, but God, there is a new there is a new heat that's in the land. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing but in the realm of the spirit. And so you've been asking God situation uh, questions about your situation, and your spirit been asking God questions about what's going on, why it's going on. God said, because if they kill off the things that are unnecessary, now I'm giving them a safety a, a safety zone to birth out some things. Some of you are in the heat of a trial, just as it is when a woman is in labor, when a woman has got to bring forth what she has conceived. I need to speak to a couple of other y'all tonight that your situation has, is, is, is as hard as it is because God has prepped you to birth something even in the midst of it, to birth something just because of it. Wow. You ain't just going through to come out with nothing. Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you. He said, So you need to get your mind together tonight to birth out what it is. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he began to take me to Romans chapter 8, verse 18, which says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Thank you. Yes. 
See, the enemy is trying to kill off glory being revealed. Mm. He tried to make you get your mind on the fact that everything is out of order. Everything is not right. The pain still seems to be unbearable. When is this going to end? I got my faith in the right place. God, I heard your word. I done killed off some things. I even died myself, God. But God, what's going on now? He said, because I need you to birth it. Jesus. It was conceived in troubled times. Now I need you to birth yourself right on up out of your troubles. Wow. Jesus. I, I need you to push on through this. I need you to get on through this thing tonight. In Romans chapter 8, it goes on to say, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the Son of God. Don't you understand that just as God birthed out creation, he is now giving you the ability in your trials and your tribulations to birth out something. Somebody is waiting on you to come forth. Somebody is waiting on you to get up and tell sickness that you got to be just sickness and not death to me. Somebody is waiting on you to come out of financial despair and so they can see that you are a conqueror and an overcomer. Somebody is waiting on what you got to birth out to manifest. Yes, Lord. Your ministry is waiting on you to birth it out. Wow. Some folks that's dying around you, waiting on you to birth out the life that's been created and conceived in your pain and in your suffering. Because he said you can't reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's getting ready to be revealed. Mm. What you going through cannot be compared to how you going to smile, how you going to praise me, how you going to walk in victory when it's all over. Thank you, wow. Thank you Jesus. He said, you got to birth it. You see, when the woman conceives, it's, it's not all peaches and cream. They go through changes. They go through a metamorphosis because life on the inside of them has to be nurtured and has to be fed. So you go through some changes. Mm-hmm. So some of us are going through some changes because of what we conceived in the realm of the spirit, of what we conceived in the hour of suffering and tribulation and trial. And God said, but something glorious is coming up out of this. Something good for me is coming up out of this, but I need you to birth it in this season. You have to have a mind to give birth. You know, when you're pregnant and if you get despair and get despondent, you don't want to give birth. You ever seen somebody, the pains, they be in travail, but they are fighting to push. Yes. God said, "Uh uh-uh. See, the pain is intensifying because you can't block it. You got to ride it out, and then you got to push this thing on through. You got to give birth to this thing. You got to come forth in it, and it has to come forth out of you. Because childbirth is not an easy feat. And for those that are in assessors tonight, you have got to birth it in prayer. Mm-hmm. You can't keep sitting around talking about, God, what's going on? Shut up already and pray. And if the pain intensifies, pray on through the pain until I give you the release. Birth it tonight. Mm-hmm. Some of us done gave up on prayer. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because we are worried about the abdominal contractions in the spirit. We worried about the labor and the delivery. We worried about being nauseated, mourning sickness. We worried about the pain in our back, the pain in our mind, the pain in our spirit. Mm-hmm. But God said, listen, I wouldn't allow your womb to get impregnated if I didn't know you could give birth to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You you focusing on the, the circumstance and the situation, but I chose somebody that I know if they trust me and get their mind on birthing it, then they then they can handle this. Because I'm right there. Wow. What happened to you is not just the enemy all the time. What has happened to you could be a part of your purpose. Because God mm-hmm. said, Look, I'm adding to your testimony and I'm brightening my glory. It's going to work for your good, but I'm going to get a greater glory out of your life. 
Have you asked yourself a question lately? What what am I carrying? God, what am I giving birth to? Because this just can't be about me being sick. This just can't be about me being broke. I said to someone a few days ago, I said, I know I am to be a wealthy woman. You cannot have hardships and challenges in one area of your life and then you are a good and faithful steward in that area of your life and don't think that there's a greater purpose behind why you are struggling and suffering right there. Mm-hmm. You you can't stay at the herb shop and then take care of your body and exercise and get sick and don't think that there's a greater purpose. Mm-hmm. My Lord. God needs your mind to shift tonight so you can birth it. You can't have a willing heart and think that every situation that you're in, that God don't have something greater for you just because you were willing and obedient and faithful. He said, you need to understand tonight that I need you to birth it. Because you're carrying in vision. You're, some of us are carrying provision. I am a believer tonight that I'm carrying provision. You cannot be a visionary of God and not have provision. You got to at some point give birth to provision. Mm-hmm. We can't continue to wait on people mm-hmm. to finance and to support vision. God said birth it. Mm-hmm. You just can't wait on the doctor. God said, birth your diagnosis because I'll speak to you. Mm-hmm. Give birth to the route that I need you to take so you'll know how to come to that expected end that I have for you. Are you willing to birth it tonight? Are you willing to push past the frustration, the aggravation, the seemingly incurable position that you're in? Mm-hmm. You done travail, you done travail, you done curse, you done did everything. He said, but now I need you to birth it out. Amen. You got to go through this labor. Now yes. you're at the point of delivery. Yes. And the, and, the inner, and, the, and the intercessors are like spiritual midwives. Y'all intercessors who are on this line tonight, they're sitting around playing in your prayer time. Mm-hmm. God said, get up and start birthing out what I what I put in your spirit. You oh, got Jesus. some of us have got to aid and abet these birthing processes that are taking forth. Everybody wants a breakthrough, but who wants to give birth to what mm-hmm. was impregnated in the womb? Mm-hmm. If you think about it, once you birth it, the breakthrough is the least important thing because it has to tear through for you to break through. But the the significant part is what you gave birth to. Mm -hmm. And everybody want to break through, but they don't want to birth the baby that God has given Mm -hmm. them to give out. Because the baby is the most important thing to God, not the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So when you have these things that are going on, as I'm interceding and praying for many of you all, God said, tell them to birth it. Some of y'all going to birth y'all healing. Some of y'all going to birth y'all deliverance. Some of y'all going to birth y'all provision. Some of y'all are going to give birth to y'all answers. Some of y'all going to give birth to, to situations that you say, God, I was waiting on somebody to prophesy. But he said, your womb carried the prophecy. Jesus, my Lord. All you had to do was birth it out. Yes. Your womb carried an authentic prophecy from me. Jesus. While you waiting on folks to prophesy, he said, that's why I ought to do to annihilate some things because some of the folks you waiting on to prophesy were the killers to what you carrying. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. And you thought they were there. They waiting on you to push so they can take your baby like Herod wanted to do Jesus and kill it. Mm. 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 My God. And to kill you in the process. Mm. So what we're experiencing now is is the problems that and some of the complications that come with natural pregnancies, we have experienced them in the spiritual realm. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So it's trying to kill vision. It's trying to kill prosperity. It's trying to kill everything that God has promised that shall come forth and rest and lay in your life. So God said, listen, there's some things that you got to have so you can birth it tonight. First thing you got to get on your mind is that I got to have some power to give birth to what I'm carrying. Yes, Yes, Lord. Because the enemy done convinced some of y'all tonight that y'all are fatigued and that y'all ain't got nothing left to push with. God said, but that's not so. You got to have power. And what has hindered the power in my push tonight? What has hindered the power in my push tonight? Thank you, Father. Could it be that I had inadequate contraction? They just weren't strong enough. Because ain't no baby coming if the contractions are not strong enough. So some of us, God said, I'm getting ready to induce your life. (laughs) I'm getting ready to allow something to hit you so that it will provoke you to push forth in power. Many women lose their strength at the end of the labor process. Just like many of us in our faith walk have lost power at the end of our walk or the end of this trial, at the end of this thing, they're getting ready to take us into another dimension, into another realm in God. But God said, listen, you cannot lose power in this hour because the devil is standing there. And he said to remind you that power belongs to me. So you got to have the power because you're going to stay in God and you're going to keep your eyes on him. Oh, you going to know that when you're weak, that he is mighty, that he is strong. Yes. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to know that, God, you've allowed me to come to my end of myself, so now i got to move in you and have my being. Thank you, Jesus. Because oh, the power that I need, God, you're going to have to give it to me to push now. Thank you. But I'm willing to wait on the download of your power so I can push. Yes, Lord. And don't you understand that this ain't going to be no long labor because you done suffered long, but you won't suffer wrong. You're going you gonna to give birth to this baby as soon as the power surge of God come through. Mm. Another complication is who you ride with. You know, the people in the street say, who you ride with, who you with. Mm. Sometimes the thing that you carry can hinder you from pushing and coming forth and birthing it out. Mm. See, some of us don't want to realize that there are some things that we're carrying that has thrown us into overdue status because mm. the blessing that you carry is so big that it done went past your expected due date. Mm. It's what you're carrying that has you overdue. Mm. Why? Because the blessing that the Lord has promised me is too big. For to come out of me. Mm-hmm. But God said, listen, in the midst of that, you got to understand that the people in your life, you got to realize whether they too big for where you going or too small for where you going. You don't need uh-huh. nobody in the room. You don't need nobody on the board in the trip with you that's too big or too small for where you going. Thank you, Lord. Who you with? Because people will stress you and make you miss your new day. Mm. Mm. They'll get you distracted and you'll miss your new day. Now you're dealing with worrying because my baby was due. God promised me that by this time last year that, that it would come forth. Now you worry. Now you start, the enemy start playing tricks with your mind that something is wrong with my baby. Jesus. Mm. Something is wrong with me. Mm. And for those that know the situation in the street, when everybody tried to calculate your due date because of who mm. you was with, they didn't want you to be with. So the enemy sitting around saying, let me give them some worration right now. Let me make them worry about everything because I, I want them to understand that I'm not going to make this easy for them. But God said, you get ready to birth it. Mm. Oh, mm. You get ready to birth it. My God. And then the the, the next thing you got to be concerned with is the way that your miracle coming forth. 
What path is God going to use this week for you to birth out what you carry? When a mother is pregnant, sometimes the pelvic is too small. And so then the doctor's got to go extreme measures to get the baby out. <laughs> what has caused you not to be able to see the route that your your deliverance is going to take this week? Could it be fear? Could it be anxiety? Yes. Could it be the fact that you're alone and all by yourself? Yes. Don't feel like your baby daddy there, your father there. What What is the situation in the realm of the spirit that got you in a way that you can't see that this baby is getting ready to come forth and that there's a clear pathway made for it to come forth? All of above. So he said, listen, when your vision is not on me, it affects the birthing process. Because you're worried about the wrong thing instead of keeping your eyes and stuff on me. So we got to be unified this week in prayer and even in the faith of this word tonight that we're going to be steadfast and unmovable so that we can abound in our labor and delivery in you this week, God. Some of us are carrying twins. Some of us are carrying triplets. And you want to know why the devil done tried to kill you? Some of y'all got identical twins. The devil said a double threat, a triple threat is getting ready to be birthed. I cannot let that come forth. But God said it's too late because it's purpose of me. Birth it, daughter. Birth it, son. Oh, Jesus. It's a birth because it got to come forth. And we got to unify in the faith tonight, in the spirit, so that there's great, uh, there's a greater covering in the numbers that are linked together. Because the enemy is trying to scramble the plan of God, which he will never do. Then God said, in order for you to birth it, you got to not only know about the passage and who you ride with, and, and you got to trust me to have the power, but you got to also know and be in the right position. Mm. Now, some of us have allowed our disposition because of our fears and anxiety to have us out of position. A woman does not give birth to a baby if the baby is out of position. It will never come down the right passageway. That could never be, if she had power to push, it still wouldn't produce it. Some of us got power to push, but we ain't produce nothing because we're out of position. Jesus. Something has blocked the path or we are out of position. It's just like when you put in plumbing under a new sink, install a sink. If all of the plumbing is not directly aligned, then as soon as you got a leak and you tighten up one place, it offsets the other place. Mm-hmm. So something has caused some of you all to be misaligned and out of position. Could it be my thought in the night season about why I'm in this situation? Why is this pickle in my life? God, why is this happening to me? Could it be that when you get ready to pray, your prayers are no longer praying unto God and giving him glory, but it's a complaint to God? What has you out of position that you cannot birth it tonight? Oh, my God. Because when the baby in the natural is in the wrong position in a woman's womb, the doctor has to go in, and sometimes they go in, that causes more pressure on the woman's body because he has to go in and turn a breech baby around. So some of y'all are going through tonight because God is now manually adjusting you to put you in position so you can birth it. He said the head of this thing ain't took right. Because it's got to come out head first. Watch this, what I just heard the Lord say. The head comes first because it represents the authority that's coming up out of the thing you're giving birth to. Oh, my yes. Authority is getting ready to authority is getting ready to be a line in the things that you're giving birth to now. Mm. So it cannot be 
out of position or in an art position. Because if so, then you got you risk the baby dying in the womb. Mm. And God said, you ain't gone through all of what you've gone through for the promise to die in your womb. Oh, my God. It will not be stillborn. It will not be brain dead. It will not have complications. Your vision, your dreams, your hopes got to now move forth in the right alignment with the will and the way of God. Mm. I don't care what your diagnosis been from the doctor. Your situation has to proceed in alignment with the will of God for your deliverance, for your mm. coming out, for your testimony. And everything that wants to be contrary to it, God himself is manually aligning you. Thank you. And Thank taking you. the enemy out of the equation. Because we got to be in position. We got to be in the right place. We got to be at the right time to bring about the right miracle, the right purpose, and the right birthing of God in our life. Don't you understand? God know the purpose and the promise and the plans that he has for you to bring you, watch this, to an expected end. See, creation was expecting. He said it was the earnest expectation of the creature that was waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. It was expecting that something, somebody, is waiting on you to give birth to it. Mm. Waiting on you. The pains that you're having to fight, it's it's all going to work together for God's glory and for your good because somebody is waiting on you to handle the pain that it would take them out so that they can see God. Thank you. The, the Bible says that the whole, so we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together unto now. Thank you. He said, don't you understand? The earth is in travail waiting on you to come forth. Jesus. The earth is waiting on you to come forth. The earth is waiting on your healing to come forth so you can heal somebody else. God can use you to heal. Your testimony can heal and bring deliverance. God is using your 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 birthing prosperity to be a blessing to somebody else. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, will you birth it tonight? Jesus. Will you please get in the position, even if it's not... The position we get in as to give birth in America, but if you have to stand up like they do in Africa and give the the birthing the right way, he said, do whatever you got to do. Mm. Find the position, but I need you to birth it tonight. Even in prayer, find your mm. position and make sure that there's nothing blocking the passage mm. way for what you got to give birth to to come forth tonight. Mm. You got to give birth to it. You waiting on another preacher. You waiting on another sermon. You waiting on somebody else to lay hands on you. You waiting on another prophecy. And God said, but when are you going to push? That's good. When when are you going to not just bear the pain, but kill the pain and come on through here? When are you going to rise up and say, God, if it kills me, I'm coming out of this tonight? Oh, God. I'm holding my baby tonight. I'm going to see the promises of the Lord in the land of the living. If I don't have no confirmation or no affirmation, I got a word from you. I'm going to give birth to my confirmation. I'm going to give birth in my affirmation. I'm going to give birth to your amen and your yes. Lord, I thank you, Father. I'm going to give birth to it tonight. I don't know where you're at in your walk tonight. But I know God said, when you kill off the enemy, now I need you to give birth to what the enemy was hanging around the camps of your life for. The enemy was waiting like Herod was waiting to kill the promise of God. You're not just where you're at in the situation that you're in. For naught. It would not be God. It would not be the God that we serve if you were going in the direction and dealing with the things you're dealing with. For naught. It would make our God look insignificant and impotent. Mm. 
But he said, I am who I say I am. Mm -hmm. So that means everything you need him to be, he can be it. As long as it does not touch his holiness, he will be everything that you need him to be. He said, so why are you laying there? Go ahead and give birth. If I need to shelter you and cover you and protect you like I did, Mary, I will. Thank you, Lord. If I need to take care of you like I did, Hannah, I will. Thank you, Lord. Whatever position, whatever trial, whatever situation, if I have to deal with you and take care of you like I did, hey, God. Jesus. Mm. If I have to manifest it in the olden age like I did, Sarah, birth it because I'm I'm covering you. Thank you. There are no Thank illegitimate you, things that you're getting ready to give birth to because I'm your baby daddy. Mm. Come on. These now. things were conceived on mm. purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. Mm. Every pain that you shed is birthing Thank something you. for the glory of God. Thank you, Thank you Father. So he said, mm. it. Come on, mm. bear it, bear down, and come on through. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And don't just look for the breakthrough, but look for the baby after mm. the breakthrough. Mm. Because after all of that pain, and I've seen women who curse in childbirth, and then they want to look at that baby. But look mm-hmm. at what God does. God will let you forget all of the trouble and the pain and the discomfort that you went through. You know why? Because most mm-hmm. of us went back and got another one and another one and another one. Mm-hmm. Yes. So in the spiritual realm, many of us, we keep getting impregnated by the king of kings. We understand that every birthing, every deliverance, every pregnancy is different. And this has been a hard one. Mm. This has been a tough one for some of us. But guess mm. what? God said, I have never left you nor forsaken you. Mm. He said, you just need to push and come on through. Mm-hmm. And let mm. me be God for you. Let me take your baby and clean him up and name him for you. I asked God when I said, God, birth it. It has no significance to it. He said, I'm even hiding from them what they're giving birth to so that the enemy won't kill them even in that aspect. Thank you. See, some of y'all can't push because y'all want to know what you're giving birth to. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Is it funny? Mm-hmm. Is it healing? Is it a husband? God said, I'm not going to even tell you. Mm-hmm. We're not going to have my day. I die, I go say that mm-hmm. my he said, we're not going to have no reveal party to our reveal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're not going to have mm-hmm. no reveal party until I reveal. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Father. You'll know when I mm-hmm. allow you to know. Because this is, a, this is a top priority. This is it's under tight security. Mm. Thank you. Because you done gone through too much to come up with nothing. Thank you, Lord. But we shall have the magnificent and magnanimous blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow, that increase and add dimension to our lives. So tonight, as God spoke, y'all rise up. Mm-hmm. Make make your mind up that I'm going to birth out what God has allowed me, whether I was in error. Whatever God has allowed me to conceive, I'm birthing it out for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And settle for nothing less than giving birth to that baby. Mm-hmm. And I promise you that the creation is waiting on you. Mm-hmm. That folks in your lives are waiting on you. And some of us, as the truth be told, we waiting on ourselves to come for. Mm-hmm. You done got tired of looking at yourself sitting right where you at. You're right. Amen. Well, Amen. What, what am I coming for? What, 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 am I, what, what do I need to be doing? Mm. My God. He said, but if you be still and know that I'm gone, the baby will come forth on the precise due date that I've already scheduled without there having to be things that have to be taken care of before they come. And I'm even declaring, as I just heard the Lord say, declare that their babies are coming forth in peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank After all this hell some of us have gone through, we need the baby to come forth in peace. 
Thank you. And we need to be able to have favor of God with with God and with men when they come forth. Give birth to it, stop holding it, and don't die. Because the final trick of the enemy is that if he can't give you to give birth prematurely, then he want to kill both of you. My Lord. And you got to let the enemy know, I shall not die but live, and my mm-hmm. baby shall too. Mm-hmm. Because the promises of the Lord are yes, yea, and amen. Mm-hmm. So I encourage you. I encourage you to birth it out tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And if you see a change in the atmosphere, the situation where you at, oh, don't get you. don't don't retreat and don't get mad. Just tell mm-hmm. God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Just tell the Lord, thank you for loving you enough thank to make you. sure you're in the right place, mm-hmm. that you're in the right position, mm-hmm. at the right time, mm-hmm. and that you know you got to give birth to these mm-hmm. things in this hour. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you honor and glory and praise. Peace. And we bless you for the word on tonight, and we thank you for the wounds that are pregnant and that are willing to hear and obey you tonight, God. And we thank you tonight, God, that as they hear and obey, that you will give them longevity and endurance, oh God, to continue to see what the end is going to be. And, Father, I bless your name. I give you honor and glory, and we thank you tonight for sealing this word in the heart and the mind of your people, mm-hmm. that we will be edified and that we will grow in the grace of you tonight, your strength and your power, mm-hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And Father, we will together give you the honor, glory, and praise, and let all of the people of the Lord say amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you for your glory tonight. Amen. Amen.